You know, we can put the theory of almost everything on a simple sheet of paper. What if ancient prophets described the rules of quantum physics long before we even knew atoms existed? Imagine words penned thousands of years ago that echo the strangest discoveries of modern science. Particles in two places at once, instant connections across the cosmos, reality shaped by observation. Today we'll decode Bible verses that line up eerily with superposition, entanglement, and the observer effect, and ask whether it's coincidence, divine insight, or selective interpretation. What would it mean if scripture anticipated the building blocks of reality? If ancient authors glimpsed the quantum fabric of the cosmos without microscopes or equations? Within the first minute, we'll confirm the title's promise. Yes, there are verses that resonate with quantum mechanics. From Genesis's Let There Be Light to John's proclamation of the Logos, we'll layer insight after insight. No slow buildup. Right now, you know we're delivering on the headline. Over the next 20 minutes, prepare for revelations in waves, an early hook, deeper theories, a final mind blower. Every sentence adds something new, pushing the narrative forward. No fluff, no filler. And by the end, we'll resolve the mystery we open. Let's dive in. Genesis opens with a formless void. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Genesis 1-3. On the surface, it's poetic creation. But in quantum cosmology, empty space is far from nothing. It's a quantum vacuum, a seething field of potential energy. Virtual particles flicker into existence and vanish. Some cosmologists propose that a fluctuation in this vacuum triggered the Big Bang, collapsing probabilities into reality. That moment, light bursting forth, mirrors the universe emerging from a quantum fluctuation. The Earth, formless and void, echoes the pre-inflation vacuum. Suddenly, Genesis reads like code executing a cosmic program. Quantum field theory teaches us that the vacuum is the lowest energy state, but even it contains fluctuations. These fluctuations can produce particle-antiparticle pairs. When one fluctuation grows, it can break symmetry and spawn a universe. Some models, like eternal inflation, propose a multiverse of bubble universes budding from a quantum sea. Each bubble pops into being with its own laws of physics. The Bible's depiction of creation in stages, light, sky, land, life, could mirror phases of symmetry breaking and differentiation. While physics describes this mathematically, scripture uses narrative and metaphor. Yet the parallels are striking. But what comes next changes everything. If this kind of mind-blowing science excites you, make sure to subscribe. We dive into discoveries like this every week. Now, before we explore the deeper parallels, let's lay the foundation with a quick primer on quantum mechanics. First, superposition. A quantum particle doesn't have a definite state until measured. It exists in a cloud of probabilities. Schrodinger's cat famously illustrates this, alive and dead until observed. Second, entanglement. Two particles can become linked so that the state of one instantly determines the state of its partner, regardless of distance, a phenomenon Einstein called spooky action at a distance. Third, the observer effect. The act of measurement changes the system, collapsing superpositions into definite outcomes. Imagine electrons in an atom. Until we measure their position, they swirl in orbitals, a haze of possibility. The moment we observe, we pin them down. Similarly, quantum entanglement underlies quantum computing, teleportation experiments, and tests of Bell's inequalities. These experiments prove that reality at its core defies classical logic. Now, when Paul writes in Colossians 1.17, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. It may not refer to particles, but the poetic resonance is uncanny. Could that be a nod to entanglement? a divine force weaving every particle into a unified whole? But one verse nails the observer effect with eerie precision, and it comes from the New Testament. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11.1. 1. In quantum mechanics until we measure, particles exist in superposed states, multiple possibilities coexisting. They are not actualized until an observation collapses the wave function. 
Could faith function as the observer, collapsing potential into reality? When we believe, we give form to the unseen. When an electron's position is measured, it takes on a definite location. When a person has faith, they act on possibilities as if they were certain. The parallel is striking. Unseen potential becomes concrete through an act of observation, whether scientific or spiritual. Matthew 17, 20 adds, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you. In physics, a tiny interaction can cascade into a macroscopic effect. Quantum tunneling allows particles to pass through barriers, initiating reactions that power stars. A small quantum event can have universe-scale consequences. Likewise, a mustard seed-sized faith could trigger reality shifts. Consider the famous double-slit experiment. When unobserved, electrons create an interference pattern, acting like waves. When observed, they behave like particles. Does the act of observation by a conscious being collapse the wave? Early pioneers like Wigner suggested yes, consciousness collapses the wave function. More recent theories, such as decoherence, attribute collapse to interactions with the environment, not mind. But the mystery remains. At its core, quantum reality is participatory. The universe doesn't reveal itself until probed. And when scripture writes of faith shaping the unseen, it sounds less like coincidence and more like an intuitive grasp of quantum strangeness. But if ancient faith aligns with modern physics, then what about God's presence itself? That's where things get strange. Are we simply cherry-picking verses to fit modern science? The Bible was never intended as a physics manual. Its authors used metaphor, parable, and poetry to convey moral and spiritual truths. No one in ancient Israel was calculating Planck's constant. The double-slit experiment functions with detectors, lasers, and vacuum chambers. Not prayer or scripture. Machines, not minds, collapse wave functions in most interpretations. Correlation does not equal causation. Mainstream physicists caution against mixing metaphysics with experimental science. Quantum mechanics makes no appeal to faith or theology. It relies on reproducible measurements. The history of science is full of theories refined through observation, mathematics, and peer review. Domains far removed from ancient writings. Yet when Paul writes in Romans 1.20, his invisible attributes have been clearly seen, being understood by what has been made, he touches on a theme central to both theology and physics. The seen reveals the unseen. The tension between metaphor and mechanism invites a deeper conversation. Is this just creative interpretation, or did scripture encode genuine insight into the hidden workings of the universe? Let's slow down. We've raced through creation, entanglement, and faith as observation. Now take a breath. What are we really looking at? Are these ancient texts trying to explain quantum mechanics, or are they expressions of the human impulse to grasp the unseen? Perhaps scripture isn't a scientific roadmap, but a poetic tapestry that captures universal truths. Ancient writers sense that reality hides layers beneath surface appearances. They describe miracles, paradoxes, and divine mysteries in the only language they had. Metaphor and narrative. Science, by contrast, quantifies and tests. Both approaches confront the unknown. Have you ever experienced a moment when belief felt as real as observation? When hope shaped your reality, that lived experience resonates with the strange participatory nature of quantum phenomena. If you've made it this far, you're clearly into the deep stuff. Hit like and let us know your theory in the comments. Simulation, higher dimensions, or something else? Your perspective could be the next layer in this ongoing exploration. Proverbs 25.2 declares, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, to search out a matter is the glory of kings. This suggests that reality hides secrets and discovery is a noble pursuit. In quantum research, scientists unveil hidden layers of reality, probability amplitudes, wave functions, quantum fields. They peer into realms that defy everyday intuition. Could scripture be inviting us to the same exploration? Romans 1.20 adds, his invisible qualities have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made. Here, the seen world reveals the unseen. That principle underpins physics. We infer subatomic behavior from experiments. 
building models that explain phenomena far beyond direct perception. Then comes Jeremiah 23, 24. Do I not fill heaven and earth? That's omnipresence. God's presence permeates all. In quantum mechanics, non-locality allows entangled particles to share states instantly across any distance. Change one here and its partner responds there. No signal, no delay. Space in that sense is an illusion. God's omnipresence and quantum non-locality both point to a reality where separation is superficial and connection is fundamental. Imagine particles separated by light years, yet linked by an invisible thread. Now imagine a divine presence that transcends space entirely, filling the cosmos with immediacy. Both concepts shatter our sense of distance and isolation. If scripture captures this truth, it may be speaking to an underlying unity that quantum physics only recently quantified. But we're not done. One final revelation awaits. John 1, 1-3 opens with a profound declaration. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. The Greek term used for word is logos, which encompasses word, reason, and principle. It implies an ordering force, a logic or pattern underlying reality. In modern physics, information theory reveals that the universe at its core is informational. Quantum information theory treats quantum states as qubits, units of quantum information that encode probabilities. Entropy, the measure of information, underlies thermodynamics. Black hole thermodynamics, for instance, ties entropy to the event horizon surface area. The holographic principle suggests our three-dimensional reality emerges from information encoded on a two-dimensional boundary. Information, not matter, may be the fundamental currency of existence. What if Logos wasn't just divine speech, but the source code of creation? Every particle, every force, every law could be lines of a cosmic program, spoken into being by the word. The analogy extends. Programmers write code. Code generates worlds and simulations. If God is the ultimate programmer, then Logos is the code base. Reality unfolds as the code executes. Consider this. When we manipulate qubits in a quantum computer, we harness superposition and entanglement to perform computations beyond classical reach. Similarly, the Logos governs creation at every scale, from galaxies to electrons. The interplay of information and reality suggests a participatory cosmos, where knowledge and being are entwined. We began by asking whether ancient scripture anticipated quantum mechanics or if we're simply reading science into poetry. The evidence we've layered is compelling. Genesis' light from the void, Colossians' cosmic glue, Hebrews' faith as observation, Jeremiah's omnipresence as non-locality, and John's logos as information. Each verse resonates with a quantum concept, revealing a pattern of insight that spans millennia. Yet the Bible never lays out equations or experimental protocols. Its purpose is spiritual and moral, not scientific. It uses narrative to convey meaning, not formulas to predict particle behavior. The parallels between scripture and quantum mechanics may be coincidence, poetic intuition, or perhaps signs of a deeper design we have yet to fully understand. Ultimately, the tension between metaphor and mechanism invites us to explore both faith and science with humility. We can appreciate the Bible's poetic wisdom while acknowledging the rigor of quantum physics. Both approaches seek to illuminate the unseen layers of reality. Maybe faith and physics are not at odds, but two complementary ways of engaging with the mystery of existence. The measurement problem in quantum mechanics, how and why a wave function collapses into a single outcome, mirrors age-old theological debates about free will versus divine determinism. If reality chooses its state only when observed, is that observer truly free? Or are they part of a preordained script? Scripture wrestles with this tension. Humans are called to choose, yet God's sovereignty remains absolute. In quantum terms, does the universe await our measurement to decide its fate? Or is every outcome already encoded in the cosmic wave function? Framing free will as a quantum collapse invites us to reconsider prayer, intention, and moral responsibility under the lens of participatory reality. 
the many worlds interpretation takes superposition to its logical extreme. Every possible outcome actually occurs in a branching multiverse. Could this scientific theory echo spiritual notions of parallel realms, heaven, hell, purgatory, or even the idea that each soul's journey spawns its own reality? Imagine every decision you make fracturing reality into countless timelines, each with its own divine narrative. If scripture hints at hidden dimensions or alternate planes of existence, perhaps it was gesturing toward a cosmic tree of worlds, each branch reflecting a different facet of divine will. Quantum decoherence explains how superpositions leak into the environment, selecting one classical history without invoking conscious collapse. Could this process be a metaphor for subtle divine action? Instead of avert miracles that shatter natural law, God's influence might guide decoherence, nudging possibilities toward outcomes that align with a higher purpose, all while preserving the appearance of unbroken physical order. In this view, miracles aren't violations, but the natural unfolding of quantum probabilities under divine calibration. Quantum tunneling, Particles passing through barriers they shouldn't classically overcome reads like a scientific analog for biblical miracles. Just as an electron can emerge on the other side of an energy barrier, Moses parts the Red Sea, Elisha heals Naaman's leprosy. Tunneling reminds us that the improbable is woven into the fabric of reality. When scripture describes events that defy everyday physics, it may be pointing to quantum pathways that allow the miraculous to occur without breaking the cosmic code. Recent discoveries in quantum biology reveal coherence in photosynthesis and quantum entanglement in bird navigation, suggesting living systems exploit quantum effects. Scripture's portrayal of God breathing life into dust, Genesis 2-7, resonates with the idea of a quantum spark animating cells. If life's complexity depends on delicate quantum states, then the act of divine breath could symbolize the initiation of coherence within biological machinery, a poetic anticipation of life's hidden quantum engine. Skeptics invoke Occam's razor. Why posit divine insight when poetic metaphor suffices? They argue that reading quantum physics into ancient texts is retroactive fitting, yet poetic intuition can capture truths long before science formalizes them. To move beyond speculation, we can point to experiments, bell tests that close loopholes, weak measurements that probe wave function behavior, even proposed tests of consciousness-induced collapse. If verses like Hebrews 11.1 1 or Jeremiah 23.24 truly encode quantum principles, then perhaps future experiments will reveal whether human intention leaves a measurable imprint on reality's most fundamental layer. If this journey through scripture and science shifted your perspective, you won't want to miss what's next. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. Join us as we dive into new frontiers where theology and physics intersect, asking questions that challenge both mind and spirit. Hit the bell icon to be the first to uncover ancient clues and modern discoveries that redefine our understanding of the universe. Next time, we'll explore the wildest theory yet. Did Jesus hint at higher dimensions in the Gospels without ever saying the word dimension? You don't want to miss that one.